I feel totally disconnected from her right now. There's been almost no romance on this trip. I'm not much of a theology man myself, but didn't Joseph wait an entire year when he found out that Mary was pregnant with Jesus? Joseph waited a year abstaining from sex and in doing so got to actually know the person that he was planning on spending the rest of his life with. I'll be honest, I uh, expected more from a man of the cloth such as yourself. Please consider meeting me today where we met on our first full day together. Ben, such a dad by how he's reading the text messages out loud. I think that's so joke. My love, please consider meeting me at the spot where we first met. Are you sending this girl on a f***ing scavenger hunt, bro? Are you talking about the ice cream shop or the pier? Because I'm confused. Next thing you know, we're all caught off guard because it seems like Ben is finally taking accountability for his lack of maturity. Now that I've had some time to think about it, I really do owe her an apology. I was being immature and skipping that breakfast really backfired on me. When he says this, I low-key feel like a proud dad because this is the first time we've seen Ben acknowledge his own mistake since he touched down in Peru. I'm actually curious to see if Ben makes the same switch up that Mike did. You know that switch from simp to incel? All right guys, right now it's time to smokey smoke and grab some snacks because this is gonna be a wild ride of a video. It was a calm and tranquil night in Peru when God sent Ben to go wait at the pier for his true love mahogany. She finally shows up and Ben and mahogany see each other. The sparks are not flying. In fact, her and Ben recreate that side hug that you give to the aunts and uncles that you don't like at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Quick question, does anyone else find it strange that this girl's parents drove four hours to have breakfast with Ben and her? Also, there's so many things that Mahogany hasn't addressed. For example, that she lied about her age and that she lied and said that this place was her house when it was obviously an Airbnb. I know that right now Ben's in the penalty box, but let's not forget that this girl's mad sus. When I didn't show up for breakfast that morning, I was upset that you weren't texting me back and I should have texted you and told you I'm not coming. Ben's of course referencing that he wrote Mahogany 10 pages of text to try and convince her that the relationship that he has with his ex-wife is a good relationship. When in fact, earlier in the episodes, he said that his wife is still angry with him and they don't have a good relationship. The relationship with my ex-wife is cold. I don't believe she's over the divorce and she still has uh, feelings of resentment towards me. But hands on my favorite Ben quote is that he said his relationship with his ex-wife was an artificial construct. Quick question for Ben, if 20 plus years of life spent with somebody and four kids together with that person is an artificial construct, then what is three months of texting, bro? And I wanna to apologize to you for that. I got you a little gift. <laughs> what? <laughs> Aww. It says amor, because I call beautiful. you mi amor. Mi amor, my behavior at the restaurant wasn't good behavior. It wasn't mighty Christian of me and I apologize. Ben goes on to say that he was expecting her parents to show up at dinner and when Mahogany's parents didn't show up at dinner, he was very confused. Me sentí muy como si no te importara que yo me vaya. Como si esto no te importara. <laughs> okay, but like, do you even care about me? <laughs> Oh my God, guys, Mahogany's playing 3D chess and Ben's playing checkers. This girl's trolling this dude so hard that she's actually starting to grow on me because it's getting funny. And then Ben's response to this makes this even funnier. He says, you didn't feel important, huh? And then nods his head like, when you know someone's full of shit, but you just go along with it. I'm actually surprised we didn't see these two jokers at the Oscars, not like they would be invited. Yo, speaking of the Oscars, what about Will Smith smacking the ever living shit out of Chris Rock? <laughs> I did not see that coming at all, especially because he was laughing at the joke at first. So when this all happened, I had the biggest surprise Pikachu face on. I guess it just goes to show that Will Smith's marriage to Jada is open to everything except jokes. I was really impressed with how Chris Rock handled the situation. He took that slap with a smile on his face. If I was him and Will Smith assaulted me on stage in front of all those eyes, I would sue him for about $50 million. That would be the easiest money I've ever made in my life. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it from the Fresh Prince. And going based off his logic, where if you don't like somebody's joke, you should physically assault them. How is Ricky Gervais still alive with all this shit he says at the Golden Globes? I firmly believe that if everybody held themselves like dad, the world would be a better place. Take your shoes off at bars in Las Vegas. Be a man. La conexión que teníamos era muy fuerte por chat y es por eso que estoy tratando de ver en estos días que, que falta él pueda ser el mismo Benjamin que era por chat. No, I know this girl isn't smiling while saying this to us. Yo, Mahaguni, you got a different face. So do us all a favor and don't talk about how this dude is different in real life. Can I tell you my truth? Yeah, tell me. My truth. 
Speaking of truth, Ben recently told his truth in an interview, and in said interview, he blames his DUI on homeless people. I can't make this up, you guys. This is what he said in the interview. In September of 2020, I went to help a homeless couple living at a Red Roof Inn, and when they offered me a little plastic cup of wine, I stupidly accepted. When I left, I felt so tired, I stopped at a hotel for the night and completely lost the next 24 hours. Apparently, they had spiked my drink. The next day, I attempted to drive home and hit the curve, disabling my car, he says. The police did a breathalyzer and found no alcohol, but later they did a blood draw at the station and found flubber lazulim in my system. So they found flubber in your system. Why did they take you to the station in the first place, Benjamin? This has to be the worst man of God I've ever seen in my life. Because instead of taking responsibility for something he did, he instead lies about it. Also, he must think everybody's stupid because if you're gonna lie about something, at least put some effort into it. This is just so not believable. Homie has three daughters and is accepting open drinks from homeless people. What an L. This has to be the most confident person to ever grace the show with their presence. I pray to God that the mother's doing all the parenting. Also, I'm going to humor his story for a second. Why would the homeless people drug you if you're helping them out? Much like Ben Hammond's segment, his story doesn't make sense. Turns out Pastor Ben is down bad because he was also fired from the Lupus Foundation. Also, Ben being fired from the Lupus Foundation could be due to an incident which happened a year ago. For our research, the Michigan Lupus Foundation was allegedly covering up something else that involved Ben Rathbun. The family came forward with information. However, Ben was protected over the individual that was part of the incident. They left the organization last year, and a family member recently commented on Ben's suspension last week, saying he got what he deserved. We blacked out their names for a privacy reason. We saw several pictures of the individual that also included Ben and videos of them together while they worked at the organization. All right, this is getting juicy. Let's see what the family member posted. I'm so mad right now. Blank put her heart and soul into the Michigan Lupus Foundation, and when she came forward with proof about an ongoing situation, the board chose chose to defend the wrong person. Now it is all coming back to hurt them and they have a lot of explaining to do. They protected the wrong person and now the world is seeing a glimpse into what someone is hiding. Angry face emoji. They went on to say, about time something happened at the Lupus Foundation, the guy gets what he deserves. I am so proud, blank and blank for standing up for what is right. Hard, 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 hard. It's like I've been saying since day one, gents, these young, impressionable Christian girls aren't safe from this horny youth bastard. Also, Ben's approach of trying to use God to convince these young girls that their relationship is divine is such a pussy, manipulative tactic, in my opinion. And it's especially hypocritical for him because he tried to play the sympathy card with us at first and be like, boo-hoo, I grew up in a cult and they used uh, religious manipulation on me. But he's using the same religious manipulation on these girls just in another form. In my last video, we also covered the fact that Ben conducted an interview with Entertainment Tonight, and in said interview, he basically said that he's not a predator because he's in really good shape. I think there is a 52-year-old predator at my church. Oh, 52 years old, you say? What kind of shape is he in? <laughs> <laughs> On Reddit, someone also posted, from what has been posted previously by the Reddit investigation team, ha, it involved a very young, straight out of college, Christian young adult. She looked super young. Beyond that initial tidbit, there are no details around what allegations she brought forth against Ben before leaving the organization. Once again, nothing's proven, but Ben thinks that it's God's mission for him to chase young pussy. Besides you guys, Ben's a pathological liar. He expects us to believe that homeless people spiked his drink. Okay, bruh, for sure. If God has put us together, no one can, can separate us. No one can. Oh, Benjamin, this is tan confuso. Do you think it's impossible? No, confuso. Confuso? Confuso. Confuso? <laughs> what? No way Confuso turned into El Smucho. What the fuck just happened, y'all? These two weren't romantic the entire segment on the show. She actually left him at the hotel and ditched him and we thought the relationship was over and all of a sudden they're making out. This is your wet kiss cam. So after Ben initially makes out with Mahogany, they take a break from kissing and he tells her that he loves her. Wood girl then responds in perfect English, you're so crazy. And Ben says while holding you in her arms, I love you so much, baby. Goes in for round two and the way he says it is is so out of character. Not to mention the pacing for how this happened doesn't make sense. So both of these actors are not getting an Oscar tonight. The only reason I'm happy that they finally kissed is that before I felt like they were on the wrong show. They should have been on the show Catfish. Now I feel like since they kissed, 
They can be all 90 days. After sucking the girl's face that as his daughter's age, Ben pulls away and asks Mahogany if they got a second chance now. When she replies yes, he is overjoyed. To be honest, I did not see this coming at all, and I do want to say that this latest episode was the best episode from this current season, hands down. You ready guys? Fasten your seatbelts. I'm going to be throwing a lot of videos at you guys this week and next week because this video was so juicy, especially the drama with Mike and Jimena. Yo, I've never seen an incel breakdown on that level caught on camera. Yeah, okay, so you passar. Pero Benjamin besa bien. Para su edad besa muy bien. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine her dad watching this like how many old dudes has my daughter made out with bro actually now that we're on the topic let's have a moment of silence right now for all the family members of the cringe people that go on the show and was my dad I would pull what that kid from home alone did when he divorced his parents mm. uh. that was hot <laughs> Shut the hell up, bitch. Would you believe we were talking about it earlier in the video, but later in this episode, Ben actually confronts Mahogany about her lies. Let's roll the clip of that. I came here to Peru and I have to trust you as well, right? Once again, don't know why he's using a translator when she's bilingual and she obviously speaks English. When I come here, the pictures do look different, you know, like it didn't look the same. And Guys, I can't with this segment. It seems more fake by how Mahogany is holding back her laughter. For the camera crew, hey, you guys might want to not show that. Come on, boys. Is it amateur hour? You guys are picking the wrong moments to switch between the camera angles. Then you had told me you were 23 going on 24. 20 or, yeah, 24. I told you this? Yes. No. Y'all need Jesus. I've never seen so many character breaks in one segment. This is beyond red flags, my guys, but my new favorite thing is that Mahogany, when she gets caught in a lie, she changes her accent up. I do, I have it up. I have it on chat. That, that you said you were 23 when I met you. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Stop. You're trolling. She's going to make it seem like this guy's insane and he's making it all up in his head. How funny is it that this 22 year old catfish is absolutely big braining this dude? I didn't know how old you were until in front of your parents, I find out that you were 22. Mm, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I told you guys about this in another video, but I used to pretend to be a girl in World of Warcraft to get money from simp losers like Ben. So I understand and respect the hustle. I think at this point, to be honest, both Ben and Mike overstayed their welcome over there in South America. They have never been treated as boyfriends from the girls that they were with. So they can't be surprised that the relationships aren't gonna work out. How funny is it that she reminded him that he also lied about valuable information in this relationship? For example, the relationship with his ex-wife. Lo mío solo fue una edad, pero lo tuyo in summary, Mahaguni is telling Ben, it's you, not me. And I agree with her. Ben is 52 years old, having a midlife crisis, prioritizing a catfish he's been talking to for three months over his children and the people that love him and support him. When he told his family about Mahogany, he said, I'm trying to put you guys first. How are you putting them first, Ben? Having important conversations where we tell each other our heart is what I want before I leave. I'm sorry, Benjamin. But also to be real about it, I'm sick of these simp ass dudes on the show. Hopefully next season we get a cool dude. No more people from Michigan. I'm sorry to everybody from Michigan. I'm sure that you all aren't freaks over there. You guys just got a really bad look on the show. After reviewing the films, I think Mahogany might be onto something because she already got a thousand dollars out of Ben. And then, you know, Gino, he was another simp from this season. Jasmine got a lot of money out of him. So I think there is a market for trolling desperate dudes on the internet. And I might just quit my job and stop making these YouTube videos and just pretend to be a girl and troll a lot of dudes. Who knows what I can make? Don't decide. Let me know what you think about this couple in the comments below. Comment below. Subscribe. Let's do Let's do Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.